Welcome back, listeners, to Sandman Stories Presents. Today we have another story about the animals from Korea. This story is about cats and dogs and why dogs are loved but cats are not. Dokebi is a Korean imp that likes to play pranks in traditional Korean houses. And I know that this story will cause some giggles from the old language that is used, but this is how the author wrote it, so let's try our best to stifle the laughter at the few unintentional innuendos. Okay, let's begin. Dokebi's Menagerie Cats and Dogs There are many dogs, but few cats in Korea. Nobody loves poor pussy there. They are not made pets and are rarely seen in the houses of people. Even the bull calves are more caressed by the children than our cats and the puppy dog takes the place of tabby or grimalkin. Korean cats are not bobtailed like their cousins in Japan, nor is pussy ever used as the Chinese kitten is to tell the time of day by the width of the slits in its green eyes. Alas, the cats in Korea are too wild to enjoy the society of human beings, or human beings theirs. The presence of dogs is especially hateful to them, Mother cats tell their kittens wonderful stories of the cruelty of dogs and why cats and dogs do not agree. The native roof scramblers can howl and caterwaul, arch their backs, blow up their tails, spit and scratch, or purr pleasantly, lick their fur, and wash their faces with their paws like cats in other countries. They are highly accomplished as mouse catchers and bird eaters. Yet they have a hard time of it, for there are too many dogs to make a kitty's life either easy or agreeable. The Korean cat hates to get its feet wet, yet it is often obliged to wade in the water to get rid of the dogs that chase it. As for the furry purry kittens, one wonders how they ever escape the fierce dogs and grow up at all. Yet it all came about because of a certain cat ancestor laughed when he shouldn't have done so. Although it was a lot of school children that made the kitty laugh, Dog never forgave the cat for its frivolity, and this is how it happened. Long, long ago, one of the mountain fairies had come down into the land from the high peaks, and being kindly treated by an old man named Tipul, who kept a wine shop, called Tokebi, and bade him reward the old fellow with a precious stone. So one night, Tokebi dropped the gem into Tipul's long-necked wine bottle. Strangely enough, after this, the wine never ceased. The bottle was always full. Every day Tipul sold plenty to his neighbors, and it was good and cheap, so that the shopkeeper was very popular. Yet without any refilling, the flask was always ready to overflow. So Tipul had no fear of poverty in extreme old age. Having neither a wife nor children, his only companions were a dog named Sunap, or Snap for short, and a cat named Meow. All three lived happily together in these times of long ago. But one day, the bottle was found to be empty, and when Tipul shook it, nothing rattled inside. Somehow, the magic stone had disappeared. Poverty now seemed certain. The old man was nearly paralyzed with grief, and his neighbors all came in to sympathize with him. They knew well that they could buy no wine anywhere else so good and so cheap as long as they had enjoyed at Tipul's shop by the river. Yet this loss of the wonderful stone was the very making of Tipul's pets. As for the cat, she became the most industrious kitty ever known. She at once began to ransack every rat's quarter known, not only in her master's home, but in every house in the village, in search of the missing stone. The racket which the cat kept up at night, among the rafters and beams under the roof, nearly drove some people crazy. They declared that Tokebi had gotten drunk by tasting Tipul's drams. Yet it was meow all the time. The cat knocked over tobacco boxes, scratched among hat covers hung on the wall, tipped up the hanging shelves, and upset the crockery in the closet over the kitchen stove. In a word, this four-footed creature played every kind of mischief that people usually ascribe to Dokebi, the sooty imp. 
Yet, when anyone climbed up into the attic, looking among the rafters, and peered into the darkness, all he could see was a pair of green eyes that shone like the moon. Poking the uncanny thing with fishing poles or throwing shoes or sticks at it only caused spitting or snarling. So they knew it was a cat and not Tokibi, and betook themselves to bed again, laying their top knots on their wooden pillows and their bodies on their oil paper carpet. They soon fell asleep again. The Koreans do not swear, but the way some good folks hurled bad words on all the ancestors of that cat clear back to the time of Gija was dreadful to think of. Indeed, some of their remarks are still preserved in tradition and proverbs. Nevertheless. With all his pains taken, Meow could not find the magic wine stone. As for Tipu, he got poorer and poorer. The dog could not climb like Puss among the rafters and the roofs, but being able to run fast and having a nose that could smell a tiger a mile off, he made excursions all over the country, even crossing the ice of the frozen river. Although he fought many another dog, chased many a rat into its hole, and worried about a hundred cats, even jumping into the woodsheds and running in and out among the cows and horses, he found nothing. Once, while in a stall where the pony, tied up with a belly band by ropes to the ceiling, was enjoying its supper of bean soup, the poor dog was nearly kicked to death. The vicious brute, thinking that Snap was trying to steal some beans from its feed box, gave the dog a blow with its hoofs that made Snap go on three legs for a week afterward. The long winter passed away and the ice melted, but the river was still cold. One day, Pussy, while chasing a rat among the rafters of the house of a yangban, or gentleman, brushed its whiskers against the greenish soapstone box, such as the king often sends as a present to those whom he likes. Recognizing the smell of something inside as that of his master's long-lost gem, he tried hard by tooth and claw to open it. All Pussy's scratching, biting, and clawing, however, were in vain nor could the dog help in the least. So a bargain was struck with the rats to gnaw open the box and get the magic stone. Both Sunap and Meow promised to let all the rats and mice entirely alone for six months if one of them would agree to gnaw open the box. Delighted at the prospect of peace and quiet for half a year, and especially while the grain should be ripening, both rats and mice worked together until out of a hole gnawed in the box, polished and hard on their teeth as it was, they got to the magic stone. Carrying it in their paws, they dropped it where the former enemies, now so peaceful, could get it. At once the dog took the gem in his mouth and ran to the river, Meow following after. Now Kit, said Snap, get on my back and hold tight to my neck hair with your claws while I swim across. As I must breathe hard, put the gem in your mouth. Mind that you don't open your jaws or yawn or laugh till we get across, do you hear? Meow wagged her tail and took the wine stone firmly in her mouth, in token of determination to deliver that precious gem safely to her master. All the time, Meow intended to jump ashore and run to her master while the dog would be shaking off the water from his hair and thus get the credit for first finding where the stone had been. It was a long, hard swim, and the dog's strength was nearly used up when only two-thirds across the river. But the cat was happy for she only had to hold on and keep her feet dry. All went well until near the opposite shore. Now it happened just then that a party of children, out of school and ready for fun, caught sight of the odd pair. They had never seen anything so funny in all their lives, and at once they laughed uproariously. Snap was too serious to pay any attention to their glee, but Meow, already tickled with vanity, became positively frivolous. She too joined with the children and laughed so hard that Snap's body was badly shaken so that he nearly got his nose under water and drowned them both. This made the light-headed and conceited cat laugh all the more. Finally bursting in a guffaw, Meow dropped the gem out of her mouth so that it was hopelessly lost in the river and fell to the bottom. That was too much for the dog, to have his labor thus wasted. Thinking only of his master, the faithful and serious Snap dived to the bottom of the river, tumbling Meow off. You may well believe, though, much scratching and clawing took place before Puss let go and swam ashore. Alas, the dog could not find the precious gem, and when once on land, he first shook himself to dry his hair, and then rushed at the cat to give her a good shaking. 
But Meow climbed up a tree, and though nearly frozen to death after her icy bath, kept growling as long as the dog barked. After that, in Korea, the cats and dogs ceased to be friends. Indeed, they never spoke to each other. Wild, unloved, and unpetted, the cat belongs to the bad animals in Tokebi's museum, while the dog is the faithful friend of man. The End So I liked how this story explained why cats are not so loved and dogs are loved. Although, if you go to most neighborhoods, you will see that cats are quite well loved. There are people who put out lots of food and such for the cats. Um, There's lots of adoptions of cats and dogs. So Korea is really getting into a strong phase of having pets in the house now. It was a bit different when my wife was growing up. And the podcaster shout-out is to Stranger Than Christian. Christian is a cool guy who will just chat with you for an hour or so and make you feel totally at ease. I talked with him about everything from living in Korea to hip-hop we listened to when we were growing up. He's a real down-to-earth guy, and if you want a podcast that is chilled out and talking to just regular people, Christian is your man. And if you like his podcast as much as I do, go and give him a five-star rating on Podchaser or iTunes. And the listener shout-out is to the region of France called the PACA, PACA, or Provence Alpes Côte d'Azur, which is in the southeastern part of France, right along the border with Italy. You are 14% of my listeners from France, and I will attempt to speak Provençal. Merci, plein et bonne nuit. Thank you, and good night.